Toledo, Ohio, the state's fourth largest city. The Glass City, it sits roughly 50 miles south of Detroit and 100 miles west of Cleveland. Known for being one of Ohio and the Midwest's manufacturing centers, much change has been seen in this city that sits on the mouth of the Maumee River. This is what happened to Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio would be established at the edge of what was once one of the largest swamplands in America, the Great Black Swamp. However, before Toledo's official establishment in 1837, in 1835, there would be a dispute with the state of Michigan. Known as the Toledo War, both Michigan and Ohio claimed the area that would eventually become Toledo and part of Western Ohio, which at the time was known as the Toledo Strip. Military forces would be called from both states for the standoff, but then President of the United States Andrew Jackson would end the dispute, in which he would give Ohio the Toledo Strip and Michigan the Upper Peninsula. A while after Toledo's establishment, the Great Black Swamp would be drained, and this would open Toledo and the area to major population growth. And after starting off as a canal city, it eventually would become a city on the rails. It would become a materials, goods, and logistics hub, growing by over tenfold from 1850 to 1880. In the late 18 and early 1900s, new industries would come into the fold. With plentiful natural gas nearby, glassmaking would become a major industry in Toledo as glassmaking required a large and reliable energy source. Products such as bottles and eventually auto glass would come out of Toledo, and despite Detroit not being that far away, Toledo would become one of the first big automaking cities in America, with its own automakers Willis Overland and Pope Toledo producing many cars, and eventually the Detroit automakers would employ many in Toledo as well. The city would continue to grow all the way to the 1970 census, growing to just over 380,000 despite a slight dip during the Great Depression years and despite many Rust Belt cities losing population in the 50s and 60s. It would not be exempt, however, from a decline in population, albeit less severe than many other Rust Belt cities nearby. In Toledo, there wasn't really this one big employer that left that brought the city down. Rather, just a slow and gradual weakening of the city's economy. Things like manufacturing would become less relevant, as less labor would be needed for production and outsourcing would begin. American car companies would see decreasing market share, as foreign options would become more relevant. And Willis Overland would no longer be Toledo-owned after the 1950s, merging with Kaiser Jeep in that decade. Things like suburbanization and freeways would take their toll as well. And over the last 50 years, the city has lost over 110,000 people, sitting at just over 270,000 people today. So what really happened here? Rather than just having a single event or employer bring the city down, it was just a combination of so many things over a long period of time. America is simply less rail and manufacturing centric than ever before. However, unlike other cities of the Rust Belt, Toledo has actually maintained many of its old employers. Willis Overland today exists as Stellantis, manufacturing Jeep cars in Toledo, employing thousands. Other employers such as Owens Corning, GM, and the University of Toledo employ many as well. A city that has seen better days, Toledo would end up avoiding some of the more severe losses that would be seen just an hour north in Detroit or two hours east in Cleveland. A city, however, that has seen its own issues with the industrialization and also water crisis through local algal blooms. It remains to be seen if the losses can stabilize at the mouth of the Maumee. Thank you for watching.